Acid-based titrations are a procedure commonly used in chemistry to determine the molarity of a solution. In order to do so, a titrant of known concentration is added slowly until a color change occurs, due to the presence of an indicator. In this video, we will discuss the strong acid, strong base case. To set up a general titration experiment, you need a burette. Here, the stopcock is open. Turn the stopcock perpendicular to the burette to close it. Using a funnel, pour a small amount of NaOH of known concentration. Swirl the NaOH around the inside of the burette to wash away any impurities. Open the stopcock to remove the NaOH rinse and close it. Now carefully fill the burette with NaOH without overfilling it. This is your titrant. Open the stopcock to remove any air bubbles. Record the volume of the NaOH. To do this, place the burette at eye level and observe where the bottom of the curve touches. Here, the initial volume is 6.8 milliliters. Clamp the burette in a utility clamp. In a beaker containing a magnetic stir bar, pour your acid of unknown concentration and a few drops of indicator. Place the beaker under the burette on top of a magnetic stir. Clamp a rinsed, calibrated pH probe so it is touching the solution in the beaker but not directly under where the base will fall. Turn on the magnetic stir. Now we will slowly open the stopcock to add one drop of base. Let's analyze the contents of the beaker on a molecular level. In the solution, we have free hydrogen ions from the dissociation of the strong acid, HCl. Hydrogen ions do not freely flow in solution and are usually H3O+, but for simplicity purposes of this video, they are represented as H+. The hydrogen ions, also known as protons, are represented by the dancers in gray. Also present within the solution is indicator, represented by the linked partner in gray and white. Now let's drop a strong base, NaOH. The hydroxide ion is represented by the dancer in blue, and the volleyballs represent the sodium ion. Once the strong base hits the solution, the hydroxide ion combines with one of the free protons to generate a molecule of water, H2O. Adjust the drip rate to one drop per second, landing in the vortex of the solution. When the equivalence point is reached, equal concentrations of base and acid have been added together. Unique to the strong base, strong acid case, the equivalence point occurs when a pH of 7 has been reached. Past the equivalence point, as additional base is added, the concentration of hydroxide ions increases as well as the pH. The endpoint is reached when the solution's color change persists due to an excess amount of titrant present. Using the information collected during the titration experiment, we can now calculate the initial concentration of HCl. In order to do so, we need to know how much sodium hydroxide of the 0.1 molar was used to invoke the color change of the indicator. We started at the 6.8 milliliter mark on the burette and ended at the 21.8 milliliter mark. Be careful when reading a burette because the numbers get lower when more volume is added. In this case, the 15 milliliter of the 0.1 molar NaOH was necessary to reach equivalence point. By multiplying the concentration of base by the volume, we can obtain the moles of hydroxide ion. This gives us 0.0015 mole of hydroxide ion added. Using the balanced equation, we know that for every mole of hydroxide ions, there is one mole of hydronium ions. Therefore, there was originally 0.0015 moles of hydronium ion. The final step in calculating the initial concentration of HCl is dividing the number of moles by the initial volume of acid. In this case, 
We started with 100 milliliters of the acid, so we would divide 0.0015 moles by 0.1 liters to give an initial hydrochloric acid concentration of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. To successfully complete the calculations, make sure the units of concentration and volume are consistent. As additional base is added, the hydroxide ion, represented by the dancer in blue, can take away the hydrogen atom from the indicator to form water. As this happens, the deprotonated indicator now adopts a pink hue. The deprotonated indicator can pick up a free hydrogen ion with the solution to return back to its original colorless nature. Let's watch to see what happens when we add more of the strong base, NaOH. Once there are no more protons within the solution for the deprotonated indicator to pick up, the deprotonated indicator will retain its color. The endpoint is reached.